Okay, today we have got Diana here, who is one of our patients. She is kindly um, going to show us her injury. Diana uh, was renovating a house and fell through the fell through a roof. Well, fell through the top story. Fell through the top story. Level below. Three three meters. Three by four. Fell three meters. Landed on her back. Fractured her L1 into like a thousand pieces, and then was in hospital for how long? For uh, almost a month. Just almost a month. So we're going to show her injury and what happened to her. So she basically had a spinal fusion. And what they did, if you come and look at this, this is looking at a, an x-ray of her L1. And what's happening is, if you look at Diana, if you imagine like this, the scan, the x-ray is through here. So we're looking down on her spine. Check this out. Have a look at this thing here. This is her L1. This is the bits that are remaining of her L1 vertebral body that has just been shattered into a thousand pieces. And this is obviously the spinal cord goes through here. You see how close it is. Now she was in hospital. She, how long did you get, didn't get operated on for? Uh, I fell on the Thursday and the operation was on the Tuesday. So like four or five days. And the reason why she's been in hospital for so long is there was bits of vertebral body near the spinal cord that had to, the spinal surgeon had to carefully take out. Now because that L1 was so shot, they had to put in a stabilizer for fusion. Now, this is not uni ordinary fusion. If you have a look at this thing, this is a metal cage is actually sitting inside a vertebral body and if we have a look at what that actually is there it is there so there's the metal cage there okay it's a round cylinder this is your T12 here's the remaining part of her L1 and here's her L2 so what they've done is they put this spacer between T12 and L2 jammed it in there packed it full of bone and then screwed in a stabilizing rod into the vertebral body up and below so this is a spinal fusion so she's now fused, she can't bend. You can see the vertebral disc here, and the vertebral disc here. There's, got, there's going to be no bending going on here at all. So she's going to not be able to bend at this point here. Can you imagine what's happening to the muscles that are going to happen around that? And this is the problem. This is where 18 months down the track now, she's come to see me. And you can imagine, she's now feeling pretty vulnerable. That has not been rehabilitated very well. So she hasn't had any much um, strengthening work, physio work, that's like she's been too scared to, to, to do anything about it because it feels like it's going to break. So we're going to show you what happens, um, where the surgeries happen and, and what happens with her control because we're starting off on trying to get her spine more control, we're starting to switch on those muscles, get her core activated so you can actually properly exercise and get back to what she's doing. So if you jump up on your, jump up on your left hand side for me Diana, let's have a look and show you guys uh, what this spinal surgery is like and then what happens afterwards and what we're going to work on. So you can see how she's sort of pretty ginger getting on off the bed. She's not too keen to sort of move pretty quickly. Um, now if we have a look at this, what they've done, you can come and see this. See this nice big scar through here? Come and have a look at this. This is where they've had to open her up, okay, and pull those ribs apart to get in and put that spinal fusion down in there. There's a few drain holes and stuff. But you can imagine that her whole body feels like it's on fire. Okay, so they've, they've, they've come in here, it's been 80 months down the track. These muscles in her spine here have gone from active, stabilized to really tonic um, sort of muscles that stop her spine moving. So she, she really limits in what she does, which we'll show you in a minute. So all this tissue here is really sensitive. Okay, now part of our treatment is actually we do a bit of physio work to loosen all this muscle tissue up very carefully because if we do it too hard she'll get too sore because it's all hypersensitive around here from all the nerve problems that are going on. But that's that's a small part of the treatment. What we're really focused on is actually getting all these muscles switching on. Now she's actually doing surprisingly well for the sort of surgery she's had. She's actually got some good control coming back and I think that's from her being fitter before this happened. If you go onto your back, my dear, for me. I'm back, I'm back, I'm back. So, Let's have a look. Stage one, we want to get her moving her spine better, her pelvic stability better. We also want to be doing lots and lots of education and activation of her transverse dominus, her pelvic floor, and her motility. So those three muscle groups they're going to work to stabilize the spine, to build that building block, that foundation. So we're trying to try and get her working on her pelvic floor. Okay, so if you come over here and look at this. What we're trying to do, when your pelvic floor is working well, what you'll see is your belly button will move down and south, okay? And the way we do it, if you two go back to here, Diana, is she goes in and finds her transverse abdominis down in here. 
when she breathes in, she lets her relax. And when she breathes out, she's gonna switch on her pelvic floor to try and, do you see that? See how that's, that little belly button moved down? So she's doing that perfectly. And we've worked on that for the last week or so, trying to get her controlling that and then holding it and breathing at the same time. Okay, so she's learning how to hold that transverse abdominus on by holding her pelvic floor on, which is really, really important, and then get her breathing at the same time. And then we can work on things like getting her legs moving, okay, so getting her falling her legs out. The low level Pilates rehab physio work that we need to do to try and get her dissociating from her hip and her pelvis, so getting her leg slides and fallouts, and we'll go through that another time. Come on onto your front, Diana. Let's have a look at that. So that's, she's good at working on that, but the big thing is her spinal stability on the back side, okay? So the back of her spine. Now I wanna show you, we've been, we're starting to train this now, so she's getting good at it. So what we're gonna get you doing, Diana, is making sure you don't uh, think about it too much, because when she thinks about it now, she's actually quite good. So what tends to happen, if you imagine like from this section to here, so this section here, she's fused. Okay, she's not moving at all and will never move in this section. She's gonna move from here and she's gonna move from here. Now remember the ribs are here, so she's gonna not much movement going on here as far as extension goes, it's more rotation. But the lumbar spine is gonna get worked a lot now. Okay, for the next rest of her life, this section here from, T, from L2 down to L5, S1, she's gonna be moving a lot. And we need to make sure that she doesn't share and, and do all this sort of work, otherwise it's just gonna wear out those discs in the next 20 years. So. Let's have a look at what happens when you don't have very good control in your spine, I mean, your isn't working. What I want you to look at, your spinal column's down here, what should tend to happen is that stays stable when you raise your leg behind you. So if you raise your leg for me, Diana, just without thinking about it, can you see how she shifts like that? Okay, so her whole body skews and rotates to try and compensate. She's doing massive compensation here up in this extensors. She's not really using a multivis at all. She's not thinking about a pelvic floor because it's, it's not very active. It's not in the, in the brain. So she has to, to try and raise a leg. Her brain goes, oh my goodness, I've got to try and do something. She compensates, do that again for I don't. So she, her whole spine shifts up and that causes a massive shear and rotation force. And that's a problem. That's what we've got to try and work on. So we have been working on it. So what we get Diana to do is what we call multivitous glute leg lifts. And you'll see this in one of our other videos. So, for her, I've taught her how to get her pelvic floor on, I've taught her how to get her transverse on, and I've also taught her how to get her multivitus on. Once we get those three things, then we can try and integrate that and get her doing leg movement with that on. Now if you come closer, have a look and see if you can see multivitus working. She, we've worked on this, we're getting her firing up. Multivitus is sitting with little muscles sitting on either side of the spine, okay? So little muscles either side of the spine, they all work together and they can work segmentally. What the muscle does, we want it to pump and tone up against me. So I'm going to cue her and you watch and see if she's firing it up. So Jonah, what I want you to do is pelvic floor on first. So you get to her pelvic floor. I can feel that tone up already. I don't know if you can see that, but she's actually toned up already. When she brings her pelvic floor on, her actual abdominals tone and her waist starts shrinking a little bit, which is what we want. Now Diana, I want you to try and tense those muscles underneath my fingers. There you go. Can you see them pump up a little bit? Okay, let it drop. There you go, so you see that switch off? Let's try that again. So, pelvic floor on, tone, there's a little bit of tone there. Now, increase those multivitis, bingo, there you go. Now, if she holds that on now, you watch through here, if she holds it on, then we clench the buttocks, so she's got three things on, she's got multivitis, she's got her pelvic floor, transversus, multivitis, and her buttock. Now she gently raises her leg, a lot less shift going on. There's still compensation going on, because hey, we've got to work on this for a year. But, she has got a lot less shift control, a lot less shear, I should say, a lot more control, and that's what we're that's what we're trying to achieve. We're trying to achieve a really good spinal stability in here, so she a stops getting pain. Okay, so she stops getting pain. Her control is better. She can exercise more, and she recovers faster. So that's where we're starting at. Just wanted to show you what happens with that spinal fusion, what happens with the lack of core control, and then um, check out the next videos to watch what we do. Um, with trying to progress those exercises into leg and arm movement.